Facebook, hello YouTube, welcome, welcome to Fun Reads Fridays, oh uh, yeah, uh huh, Fun Reads Fridays, oh uh, yeah, Gomez, it's Fun Reads Fridays, yeah, Gomez, what you looking at? Oh, Gomez, are you confused about what's coming up the next couple of weeks? Is it going to be spring or winter again? What do you think? What do you guys think? Do you think it's gonna be spring or winter? Hmm. Well, I know two things we can ask. We can ask our groundhogs, cause today is Groundhog's Day. Woohoo! So we can figure out if we're gonna get six more weeks of spring or winter. Oh, because today on Groundhog's Day, is usually when the groundhog comes out of the ground and if he sees the shadows and scurries back into his hole, that means we're going to get six more weeks of winter. Oh, this over here. <laughs> but if he's just like, yeah, I'm out. I'm ready to go. I'm going to go explore. That means we're going to get spring. That's right, Gomez. So I don't know what we, what Mr. Groundhog said today. There are two. There's one up north. In North America, I think in Pennsylvania, and there's one in the South, I believe in Carolina. Hmm. Gomez, do you remember what the what the groundhog picked today? No? Me neither. I guess we'll find out soon in a couple of weeks, whether it's spring or winter. <laughs> but for those of you who are new, welcome to Fun Reads Fridays, which is brought to you by Smart Kids Club which is a U.S. digital publisher and has a wealth of library for books. And today we're going to be learning about animals and why they do stuff with Dr. H.W.Y. <laughs> and answer questions about what animals do. Like, why do the groundhogs know about winter or spring? Hmm. <laughs> and all kinds of different things. Gomez, we're going to learn about animals. Come here. Gomez, what do you think we're going to learn about groundhogs? Are, are they going to be friends with Gomez's? Is that it? Hmm. Do you think go groundhogs would want to be friends with Gomez? Yeah, me too. Although Gomez, you gotta be. Are you gonna be really, 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 really excited? Because Gomez gets really, really excited, and he comes off a little too strong, and it kind of scares his friends away. But that's okay. <laughs> Gomez, are you excited about dirt, uh, about learning about animals? With Dr. Why animals? <laughs> are you guys ready to learn about animals today too? Yeah? All right, let's go. Gomez, ready? Scooter time, scooter time, scooter, scooter time. Boom, boom, scooter time, scooter time. Ooh, it's a little longer scooter time this week. Woohoo! Dr. H.W.Y. answers your questions about animals. This is written by Lydia Light. All right, here we go. Ooh. Introduction! Hello! Do you love animals? as much as Dr. Y does? Yeah, me too. When Dr. H. Y. is not tinkering away in his science lab, he is studying animals. Wow, and he's studying them in their natural habitat. They are quite fascinating. He takes many notes and keeps a log of his observations. Wow. So that means when he starts studying these animals, he has to take lots of notes, huh? With lots of papers and stuff. Woo! I bet there's a lot of things you can learn by reading some of his papers. Cool. He knows that children have a gazillion questions about animals and why they do the things that they do. Huh, I have a gazillion questions. Do you have a gazillion questions about animals? Hmm. 
Yeah, me too. Let's see if he can answer some of them. Here is Dr. Y to the rescue. Oh, good. I don't know if I can answer them all. <laughs> he has all the answers. And if he doesn't know the question answer first, he'll eventually find it. Oh, that's good too. Sometimes grown-ups don't know all the answers, but they can look it up for you so we can learn together. <laughs> Here are some interesting questions that children have asked him about. And there's a fun fact. So there's blue words and fun facts. That's awesome. Hmm. Do we want to start with the fun fact or the blue word? Hmm. Which one do you guys want to start with? Hmm. Let's do the fun fact first because that's our first one. Fun fact. The initials and H and Y in Dr. Y's names stand for how and what. Oh, so full name of Dr. How, What, Why. Ah, okay. Those are very important questions when you're learning about the world and how it works. <laughs> Look at all those animals. Hmm, there's an animal that we actually were talking about a little bit. At least I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Can you find the groundhog? That's right. I think he's the little brown guy. He's either the groundhog or the gopher. They do look pretty similar and they burrow in the ground. <laughs> but let's take a look at that blue word, tinkering. Boop. <clears throat> This is a casual, casual way of saying Dr. Y was known for working in his lab, studying and repairing things. Oh, so do you tinker when you work on stuff at home? Yeah? Oh, that's really cool. You guys are youth scientists. <laughs> Why is a dog's nose wet? Well, I've always wondered that. Gomez has a wet nose all the time. He licks it a lot, so I always thought that's why it's wet. Or when he drinks water, it splashes all over his face. Hmm. Let's find out. Dogs are especially cute and cuddly. And I'm sure you all notice that a dog's nose is often cold and wet. Why is that so? Well, first, all dogs tend to lick their noses and quite often as it keeps them cool. Oh, so that's a way to keep them cool. Hmm, I don't know about you guys, but I can't reach my nose with my tongue. I can't do it. Can any of you guys do it? <laughs> Good try if you can, or if you can't, that's okay. I can't either. <laughs> they also lick their noses to clean it because it gets everywhere, including in their food dishes. Ah, so they're trying to get all the crummies inside their nose when they're eating their foods. <laughs> Since dogs are covered with hair, they can't sweat through their skin like we do. Oh. That's true. So that's why they pant a lot. They go, <laughs> they can't sweat. So that's kind of a one way to do it. And that's probably why their nose is cold too. Ooh. <laughs> Instead, they release body heat through their nose and mouth, which keeps their nose and tongue moist. Lastly, wet noses help dogs pick up scents better because they can absorb tiny water droplets that can carry scents. Oh, so this is how a dog is able to smell as good. Hmm, so that's probably why Gomez can smell his treats when he comes in the house. <laughs> he knows exactly where his treats are too. <laughs> Did you know that a dog's sense of smell is about 10 
to a hundred thousand times greater than yours or mine? I didn't know that. Gomez! Oh, I think he went looking for his treats again. Uh-oh. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but that's really impressive. Or I wonder if he followed his nose like he was told to, and he went to go check out some awesome stuff. He's Betty snooping for presents for his birthday coming in April. <sighs> sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> Fun fact, the bloodhound is one of the oldest dogs that hunt by scent. Oh, wow. Its work with police is so accurate that evidence trailed by a bloodhound has been accepted in the courts of law. Wow, that's really important work. And I bet they're really, really good at finding stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I tend to lose stuff all the time, and it's really hard for me to find it. Maybe I need to hire a bloodhound when I lose stuff sometimes. <laughs> Alligator. Wait, maybe that's a crocodile. Hang on, I'm confused. How and why is an alligator different from a crocodile? Hmm. Do you get confused sometimes too with alligators and crocodiles? Yeah, me too. It gets really confusing to tell the difference. Hmm. I admit that alligators and crocodiles are pretty similar. They're both reptiles with long tails and four short legs and a body full of scales. Oh. But they have they belong to different families and they are different in many ways. Oh. If you look really closely, okay, we gotta put our goggles on. Doo -doo -doo. Oh. If you look really cl closely, first of all, look at the shape of the head. Hmm. Huh. An alligator's head is shorter and wider, and it is shaped like the letter U. Oh. Huh. Whereas a crocodile's head is longer and shaped like a V. Oh, huh. I see the difference. Hmm. So looking at the head at the two reptiles next to the words, which one is the crocodile and which one is the alligator? The top one's the crocodile? Hmm, I think you're right. It's got a V shape and it's very long, huh? Wow. Also, the fourth tooth of a crocodile sticks out when its mouth is closed. And alligators tend to be darker in color. Oh, can you guess which one is less aggressive? Hmm. Alligators tend to be less aggressive, but I bet you wouldn't want to see either one in your backyard. <laughs> I don't know about you. I wouldn't want to see an alligator or a crocodile in my backyard. What about you? Yeah, that can be very scary. They're kind of like dinosaurs. In fact, the fun fact says, alligators and crocodiles have outlived dinosaurs by a good 65 million years. Wow, that's a really, really long time. Wow. Why are giraffes so tall? I've always wondered that. In fact, my sister's favorite animal is the giraffe, and she loves them. But she's also a lot taller than me, so that's probably why. <laughs> it's no secret that giraffes are the tallest animals on the planet. Wow. Sometimes growing up to seven feet tall. That's really tall. But have you ever wondered why? Some folks believe their long necks help them reach the top of the leaves as they gaze, as they as they graze, because you know that they, they eat leaves. <laughs> but that's not correct. Oh, 
then why are they so tall? The real reason has to do with mating. Male giraffes use their long necks to fight each other. Oh, during mating season. So let's imagine these are the heads of the giraffes. They fight each other, and this part, their fore my forearms, are their necks. So they fight like this. Ow, that would hurt a lot to fight with your neck. Huh. They begin the battle by pointing their heads up to show which one is taller. Ah, so they're trying to figure out who's the taller one to impress the ladies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they use their neck like a hammer, slamming it into their opponent, like this. <laughs> the giraffe with a longer, heavier neck wins and gets to pick the mate. Ah, so that's how they win. It's kind of like arm wrestling or something. Well, not arm wrestling, but neck wrestling. <laughs> it's only arms on me because I don't have a long neck. That's right, Gomez. <laughs> Fun fact, in addition to a long neck, giraffes also have super long tongues and can lick almost any part of their face. So that means not only can they lick their nose, kind of like dogs can, they can probably lick the top of their forehead. <laughs> my, no my tongue's not long enough to do that. Wow, that's really impressive. And I see a blue word. Let's see. Animals come together and breed and produce babies or many babies. Ah. Hmm. Why do dolphins make so many sounds? Squeak, 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 or ee, 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 ee. <laughs> Dolphins are so chatty. It is true that dolphin makes whistle-like sounds to communicate and keep in contact with one another as they travel. But that's not the only reason. They do also make another sound purpose called echolocation. You might have heard this word when studying bats because they use a lot of echolocations too. They can't see very well at night. But why do dolphins? Hmm. This is when they scan their surroundings to see where they are or how to find food. Oh. They send clicking sounds into the water around them, and those sounds get reflected into solid objects like boats or rocks. The dolphins listen to the strength of the re rebounding noise. So when, like in you know, when you learned about bats, they make a sound. <laughs> so the sound that bounced from the camera to me. That's the sound that they would use to figure out where they are. <laughs> the dolphins listening to the strength of a rebounding noise and they are able to identify the object as well as how far it is. Pretty clever. <laughs> so they can figure out how far away something is and how big it is, all just by using the sounds of their voices. Oh, that's really neat. Fun fact, Daniel Kish has been blind since he was a baby. Oh, But he is the only human who has perfected a form of human echolocation using reflecting reflected sound waves to build a mental picture of his surroundings. Oh yeah, that can be really, really helpful, especially if it's really dark and you can't really see all that well. This happens mostly in caves, but it can be a little bit difficult in caves Caves echo. <laughs> hmm. Why can fish breathe underwater? Hmm. For those who lived on land, we use our lungs. Everybody breathe in. <sighs> breathe out. <sighs> and we do this to breathe the air. But what about animals that live underwater? Like fish. They also need oxygen to survive but they use their organs called gills, and they're on the sides of their face. <laughs> the gills are located on the side of the fish's head. So when we make this face for fishies, that's the gills working for them to breathe. 
They are made of a thin sheet of membrane called filaments. The fish opens its mouth to take in water and then pumps that water into its gills. The water gets absorbed, contains the oxygen the fish needs. Once the oxygen is absorbed, the water flows out through the fish, through the fish, through the gills. So it comes in through the mouth and goes out through the gills. <laughs> oh, and there's two things. We got a fun fact and a blue word. Let's start with the blue word this time. Filaments. A thin thread-like fiber, in this case, found inside the gills of a fish. Ooh. A person who studies fish is called an ichthyologist. I don't know if they think fish are icky. I wouldn't want to be called an ichthyologist. Maybe it's because it's an old way of saying fish in, I think, the language of Latin. Oh, no. Everybody hold your nose. Why do, why and how do skunks use their spray? <laughs> skunks can get kind of stinky. In fact, my uncle has skunks in his house right now. He's trying to take them out and take them to their home instead of his house. Because he doesn't want his house to be stinky. Because pee you. <laughs> Have you ever been sprayed by a skunk before? Some? I'm so sorry. I'm sure that wasn't fun. Especially trying to get the stink out. I've heard many different ways to try and get stink out. One of them was bathing in tomato, uh, tomato juice. Or is it tomato soup? Oh, now I can have that. Oh, I can have grilled cheese with that. That'd be really yummy. <laughs> but why and how do skunks use their spray? I heard that the spray of a skunk is the most disgusting smell. P-U. But why and how do these critters spray? The truth is that skunks are shy animals and will only spray you if you bother them. Oh, huh. so if you leave a skunk alone and just let it be, it probably won't spray you. In fact, a skunk may never spray during its whole life. However, if it feels threatened, it will start by giving you some warning signs. Oh, so it's going to warn you before it sprays you. Okay. It lifts its tail and arches its back to make it look as big as possible. That way it thinks... I'm bigger than this human. It's not going to hurt me if I get as big as I can. <laughs> oh, Sometimes it stamps its feet. And the skunk continues to be bothered. It turns around and shoots a smelly spray opening underneath its tail. <laughs> big fart. <laughs> the spray can go very far and up to 10 feet away. Ooh. The liquid spray is very smelly, and it can go sting a predator's eye. Ugh, I'm sure they wouldn't like that. I'm sure nobody would like a spray to go into your eyeballs. That would hurt. This one furry creature you don't want to mess with. That's right. You don't want to get sprayed by a skunk. I bet that would be really bad. But there's a blue word and a fun fact. Fun fact, skunks are nocturnal. They sleep during the day and hunt their food at night. So if you're in bed by bedtime, there's very low chance that you'll actually run into a skunk to be sprayed. So that's good. Now let's see what a predator is. Animals then hunt and kill other animals for food. Ah, so a skunk is trying to protect itself from being gobbled up. Huh. Why do camels have humps? I bet you think all camels store water in their humps. Is that not why they do that? I always thought that. Isn't that what you thought too? Huh. I wonder what the real reason is. But that's not accurate. Camels actually store their fat in their humps. 
This allows them to survive up to two weeks under harsh conditions. This is great news for the camels because they typically live in the desert where food and water are scarce. A camel can carry up to 80 pounds of fat on its back. Wow, that's a lot of weight. This fat gives the camel energy. Once the camel uses up all that fat, the humps shrink and falls to the side. <laughs> Once the camel eats food again and rests, huh, the hump goes back up. Some camels even have two humps, but these are mostly found in Asia. Wow, that helps a lot with energy. There's a fun fact and there's a blue word. Let's start with the blue word this time. Boop. Scarce. When there is a lack of something. Oh, so that means when there's not a lot of stuff happening. Like if you go to the grocery store or if you go to the grocery store in the South when it's super cold outside and it might snow, one of the things that gets really scarce are bread and milk. You can't find those things anywhere. They're always gone. And toilet paper. That one tends to go pretty fast too. <laughs> now on to the fun fact. Camels can go up to two months without water and can drink 40 gallons of water at a time. That's a lot of water. We all should be drinking water, but wow, 40 gallons. Hmm. Why do animals hibernate? Mm, I don't know, but sometimes I wish I was one of them. <laughs> Shh. Don't make a sound. Some animals are busy sleeping. <sighs> Many hiber animals hibernate in the winter, which means they sleep and remain inactive for days, weeks, even several months. Well, that's a long time to be sleeping. When they hibernate, they are able to conserve energy and slow down their metabolism <laughs> and reduce their body temperature. Hibernation is important so animals can survive long, difficult periods when food is scarce. All oh, that we learn with the camels, like the winter, Animals like big black bears, hummingbirds, groundhogs. That's what it is. They're waking up from winter. So if they wake up and they're ready to go, that means it's spring and they're ready to get going. But if they go back in and go back to sleep, that means it's still going to be winter for a while. <sighs> oh, I almost fell asleep again. And squirrels all hibernate, but they have their own way of doing things. For example, a squirrel can wake up to five days every five days to eat a snack or go to the bathroom, while bears can hibernate without waking up for seven months. That's almost half of the year. Lazy bones. <laughs> That's okay. That's important for them. So we have two blue words and one fun fact. Let's start with the fun fact. The heart rate for many animals slows to less than 10 beats per minute. Oh, when they are hibernating. They're hibernating, breathing also slows down. So they sleep really, really deeply. So not a lot of things can wake them up. Wow. Now we have conserve and metabolism. The chemical process that happens in a living body in order to maintain life. Ah, so this is part of how we eat. Metabolism burns it up so we use it for energy. Conserve. To save and protect. Make sure we hold on to a lot of energy so we have some to use it. <laughs> hmm. Why do zebras have stripes? Hmm. A zebra is like a work of art. You would think that someone painted the stripes right on, but there is a reason they look like this. Yes, 
nature created these beautiful stripes so that zebras could easily camouflage. That way you can't see them. <laughs> but they camouflage themselves from predators. Remember, they get eaten a lot, so they're trying to hide. <laughs> With their stripes, they can hide in long, tall grass. You may be thinking that white and black stripes stand out from the green grass. I don't know. I was thinking that too. <laughs> and you're right. But the zebra's main predator is a lion. And lions are colorblind. Oh, uh, so they can't see color very well. In fact, they mostly can see in black and white. So this helps them out a lot. They can't tell the difference between the stripes of a zebra and the stripes of the grass. In addition, because all zebras look the same, it is difficult for a lion to see which way the zebras are running. So if they're running in all kinds of different directions, it's really hard to keep in mind. <laughs> it's really hard to figure out which zebra to point out. So that's really helpful. There's two, well, there's a fun fact and a blue word. Let's do the blue word first. Camouflage. To hide or disguise. You can see me. <laughs> or, fun fact, like a human's fingerprint, each zebra's stripe is unique to them. No two zebras are alike. Oh, that's pretty interesting. I didn't awesome. know that. But we've made it to the end. Wow. That was really cool. And we learned a lot about different things and different animals. And we now know why groundhogs are used to tell if it's going to be, well, spring or winter. It's because that's gonna be the end of their hibernating season. So if they get up and go, and they wake up from their long sleep, that means it's going to be spring. But if they decide to go back to sleep, that means they're gonna have more winter. <laughs> I hope you had fun today, and I hope you learned a lot about different animals today. Wow. I hope you guys had fun today, and you can learn about lots more about different animals from Dr. H.Y., and you can check out some other books about different kinds of things, like weather, seasons, animals, all kinds of stuff through Smart Kids Club. You can check out my link in the description below, and if you use the code just right. You can get a 10% discount. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. 10%. Woohoo. <laughs> It'll be in the description or the first comment below, depending on if you're on Facebook. Hi, Facebook. Or YouTube. Hi, YouTube. And if you want to see what else we've been up to, you can stay on here or you can check out Instagram, Threads, as well as X as well. And, of course, Facebook and YouTube to check out other exciting things that we have going on on Smart Kids Club. I hope you guys have fun today, and I don't know exactly what we're going to be reading next week, but it'll be a fun surprise, especially with Valentine's Day coming up. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, guys!